today I want to be reviewing the Infinix Note 7 Lite. So as I sat down going through the phone wondering what to say in this video, a thought came to me. Before we get into the video, let's talk about the Infinix Note 7 Lite. So I tried putting myself in the manufacturer's shoe to understand how the Infinix Note 7 Lite came about. Since the Infinix Note 7 Lite is actually a prototype, which means the Infinix Note 7 is the real phone that has the higher specs. Actually, they do that. Like, they just pick parts from random software, which is the parts that were decent and parts that were bad. Then they just merge it together to just give us the Infinix Note 7 Lite. So the headline for, for this video should actually be about who exactly is the Infinix Note 7 Lite meant for. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about the Infinix Note 7 Lite. And if you do like, end up liking what you see on this channel, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for more notifications on my next video. So, let's get into the video. The Infinix Note 7 Lite was released on April 6 last year, focusing on the budget smartphone level. The design is good looking, has that mirror reflection type of look. It reflects light which makes it flashy though Infinix claim it's a gem cut finish that creates subtle patterns and highlights with every angle you view the phone from. It is a fingerprint magnet and takes a lot of scratches if you are not careful so I do recommend a TPU case or any case to help do the trick. A 6.6 .6 inch smartphone with a dimension of 165.4 by 76.8 and weighs about 185 grams, which one I'm quite impressed. It feels light when holding it. In the build aspect, it has a glass front with no Gorilla Glass protection, which I suggest getting a screen protector. The back is made out of plastic and same goes for the frame. Down at the bottom, you get a headphone jack. A micro usb port so no type c on this one and a loudspeaker turning to the side you get a side mounted fingerprint and above your volume workers at the other end you get the same slot the note 7 Lite gets a dedicated dual sim slot as well as a slot for a micro sd card in front there is a 6.6 .6 inch display with a resolution of 720 by 1600 pixel it's not the brightest a screen to body ratio of 82.8% and a 266 ppi density. Acceptable bezels with a hole punch cut out on the side, no good viewing angles, no maximum brightness with an IPS LCD display. Though for some reasons the Infinix are calling it the HD Infinity O display. Why? General performance on the phone is decent, it will do the trick for daily use and juggling between apps. It comes with the MediaTek Halo P22 chipset and powered by the Octa-Core 2GHz with Cortex A53 processor. It comes in two variants, 64GB of storage with 4GB of RAM or 128GB of storage with 8GB of RAM. It does get that goggle skin but they are mixing it up with their skin called the XOX 6.0. Paired up with Android 10, it should get the Android 11 pretty soon. The settings menu is quite neat, well planned and set up nicely. I did notice a game mode program which helps improve game experience and other features but I do not recommend this phone for heavy gaming like the PUBG or Call of Duty. It has a 60 megapixel wide camera in front, though I don't like the selfie camera, I think it's bad. On making this video, I kind of lost the pictures that I took on the selfie cam. So just know that it has a poor dynamic range and the noise reduction is really bad. The noise reduction is terrible. The XOX 6.0 skin comes with a shuffle icon. When touching the shuffle icon, the wallpaper on the phone keeps on changing randomly. And the impressive part of it is you get to add your own wallpapers and use the shuffle icon to swap between them at any time you want. It's quite an impressive feature on this smartphone. At the top, you get a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel wide sensory. 2 megapixel macro sensor and 2 megapixel depth sensor with a quad LED flash which supports panorama and HDR. The main camera is good, it has a good color reproduction though details are off, noise reduction is at minimum. The camera tends to lose dynamic range, for example, if you look at the sky in this picture, it's off, 
the macro lens is awful no detail and aggressive noise reduction although the video is maxed out at 1080p at 30 frames per second the best part of the phone is the 5000 mAh which Infinix claims to last up to 4 days with light usage the phone's main target is the battery it has a 5000 mAh battery which is really hard to kill and with the MediaTek Halo P22 it's really hard to kill because the MediaTek Halo P22 doesn't consume as much battery as other chipset does it takes long to charge despite the 10 watt fast charging it claims to have the other quality is good paired with the dual speaker and the huge display watching video on the phone is nice lastly the fingerprint is fast and the position of it fits perfectly and combining it together with the power button makes it easier to so unlock so who is it made for seeing as the phone comes with a huge battery its market is highly targeted towards those who have low power it comes with a big battery and for those people who love having a longer battery life, a good audio quality and a main camera that is actually decent, that's who this phone actually goes towards too. It pushes the market towards the people who actually need a longer battery life, a good audio and a decent camera. I mean the front camera because the selfie camera is obviously bad. It actually has a good battery. I think that's the main target of the phone. With, an, with a 5000 mAh, I hardly see anybody running it down. I don't advise you using the phone to play games like PUBG or Call of Duty because of the chipset is quite, it's not suitable for that. Then it also has um, this is a 10 watt charger so also charge the phone, but it takes up to two hours to fully charge the phone. Then the phone camera is actually, it's actually good, it's decent for the price, the, but the selfie camera is bad, it's really bad. I'm sorry I lost the pictures. It's bad. The phone now has a huge display. It has a 6.6 inch display. So it's actually good for watching movies. So I actually recommend it with the audio listen. The audio is decent. It has a DTS audio system. Well, that's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.